Hello everybody, <clears throat> this is Michael Robbins and I'm uh, standing in for uh, Tuya, Tuya Robbins, who is out of town right now. And we are going to be, we're going to be working today with the invocation of money for hierarchical purposes. This is the meditation which uh, DK, Master DK, gave in Discipleship in the New Age Volume 2. He gave two special meditations, one for the factor of manifestation without which we cannot have um, the proper kind of manifestation that we need in this dense physical plane and also the reappearance of the Christ meditation, the Thursday meditation with which we uh, may be familiar. I hope that there's not too much um, interruption through electronic noise. Uh, it's, it's very strange, something is passing through the air at the moment, so uh, we'll do the best we can. I'm going to go back just a little bit here to a slide that you may have seen in the introduction uh, where he says uh, the following. This meditation is so simple that many of you may regard it as innocuous and perhaps futile, used by many simultaneously. It may shatter the impasse which at present prevents adequate funds pouring into the work which the hierarchy seeks to accomplish. And then he goes on to say, do this meditation every Sunday morning. Well, you know, due to our global outreach, uh, it's not Sunday morning at the same moment all over the world, but you know, we'll somewhere, maybe in the United States, it's Sunday morning. Okay, um, so uh, it will be the best we can do. Take what you have saved during the previous week and dedicate it to the work and present it in meditation to the Christ and his hierarchy. Whether the sum is large or small, it can become an attractive and magnetic unit in the Master's plans. It's really amazing, you know, that the uh, major difficulty with the uh, facilitating the reappearance of the Christ and the externalization of the hierarchy is the financial problem. So we have to learn how to be generous how to give and at one point master dk tells us he says well give until it hurts and we're all you know always reminded of the christ in the temple uh, who saw two people give one was the pharisee who gave a lot of money but it wasn't much for him and the other was the widow who gave a tiny bit, it's called the widow's mite. It means a, a tiny piece of money, but it was everything she had. And so the Christ remarked on that. And one more point here, realize the occult law to those who give shall be given so that they can give again. And you know, there's, there's something even more powerful along the same line, and it predicts our future. To those who give all, all is given. And we just have to learn not to be so attached to the world of uh, dense physical forms and also, you know, the world of the personality in general, and then we will be able, as the soul does, to freely give. Now I'll move ahead a little bit here. This is all from the Master 
DK, the messenger of the masters. I mean, you know, there are a number of uh, ways that the hierarchical impulse can reach humanity, but it was decided uh, maybe a couple of hundred years ago, uh, maybe a little more than that, that the ageless wisdom could be brought closer to humanity. And not all the masters apparently <laughs> agreed that humanity was ready. But particularly Master Moria and Master Kutumi, so the story goes, promoted that approach to the, uh, to the human consciousness and Master DK came into the picture. He was not yet a master, but he came into the picture later as the one who carried their thoughts and their words and the will of hierarchy to humanity. This was all approved by, we are told, Sanat Kumara, the Lord of the world, this approach. And we have yet to see whether it really uh, works out properly for everyone and really does facilitate humanity's approach. We, we've been told, you know, it, it, delay could happen. At one point, Master DK said, if there is delay, it will only be for a few hundred years. Well, you know, in terms of the personality, that seems uh, a long time. But maybe in terms of how uh, time is counted in the world of the soul, it does not seem to be an inordinately long time. So uh, we have to work very hard to bring in this process of externalization. Uh, it takes money to do that because that is the currency of action in the world and uh, people are motivated uh, by this symbol, this symbol of money, this, you know, gold stands for it. And people have to be mobilized in order to create the outer conditions whereby the hierarchical work can be properly anchored. And it's never easy, never easy to really do that because money tends to flow along certain channels which are rather worldly and have everything to do with sustaining the desires of the personality. And that's not what we're talking about. We have to transfer uh, the, this stream of flowing golden substance out of the hands of the forces of materialism and into the hands of the forces of light. That's, uh, and everybody has to find a way to do that in their own life so that what they want and what they reach for is not of the dense uh, world or the phenomenal world, but something higher, which has to express uh, in that world. To those who give, shall be given to those who give all shall be given so that they can give again and it's uh, amazing that some of the masters have been uh, very wealthy people it didn't mean anything to them except as a method of promoting the hierarchical work you know the story of uh, master R uh, Le Comte de Saint Germain uh, fabulously wealthy well he could as a great alchemist, he could make his own gold, he could make his uh, own uh, jewels and so forth. He sometimes gave them to people at fabulous dinners, you know, everybody received a fantastic jewel, uh, only to discover when they got them home, they just disappeared because they were aports. They were temporary precipitations and a very good lesson, I think, involved there. So we will begin. If money is one of the most important things needed today for spiritual work, what is the factor which is at present deflecting it away from the work of the hierarchy? Let us, in alignment with our higher self, let us ponder that and see if we can see what it is that is deflecting it away from hierarchy and their purposes.
And I think it becomes obvious that our sense of values is involved, Venus and Taurus and so forth, and the higher our desires, the more likely it is that this uh, symbol of energy and activity will be turned towards higher objectives. Now we have to ask ourselves in the light of the soul, what is my personal attitude towards money? Do I regard it as a great and possible spiritual asset or do I think of it in material terms? Let's all be perceptive and honest about this. Obviously, there's always room for improvement, even if we consider ourselves to be spiritually generous. There's always the possibility of improvement. <coughs> Excuse me. The next question that we ask ourselves, what is my personal responsibility in regard to money which passes through my hands? it as a disciple of the masters should handle it. Money 
it's all symbolic. We all agree on a certain currency, a certain exchange value for this symbol. It's a contract we make with ourselves in society. Money is symbolic to a tremendous degree. But the heart has to get into it. There's the Christ in the center. This is about the blending of the second and third aspect of divinity. Interesting that Benjamin Franklin is there on the American hundred dollar bill. He was uh, an initiate, surely, of the third degree, probably on the seventh ray and uh, quite a story about him that he ran the entire Revolutionary War budget through his personal bank account. When it was all over, he squared the books, delivered the books to the government, and in his hand was one farthing. He couldn't quite balance the books. He was one farthing off, and he gave that farthing to the government along with really what any one of us would consider perfectly balanced books. The blending of the third and the second ray is needed. Now with heartfelt invocation and the determination to do something practical in our lives with the money that passes through our hands, we say this invocation. O thou in whom we live and move and have our being, the power that can make all things new, turn to spiritual purposes the money in the world. Touch the hearts of men everywhere so that they may give to the work of the hierarchy that which has hitherto been given to material satisfaction. The new group of world servers needs money in large quantities. I ask that the needed vast sums be made available. May this potent energy of thine be in the hands of the forces of light. to think about money in a new way, without fear, without selfishness, without concentration on the personality, but as a true instrument of spirituality, let every one of us see to that. We have a strong power behind us as we seek to see money turn to spiritual purposes. In this mantra, we find that we are supported by the Christ in this. He for whom the whole world waits has said, that whatsoever shall be asked in his name with faith in the response will see it accomplished. As 
been said by the Master Moria that in the future men will compete with each other along the lines of generosity and constructive action. Who can be more generous? Who can give more money for spiritual purposes? May that day come soon. And now we become specific in our meditation and you think of those groups, those projects, those efforts leading to the reappearance of the Christ that need to be rightly supported. And so we say, and then we think within ourselves, I ask the needed money for, and then you fill in what it will be. I ask the needed money for. can demand this because and then we use the manifestational verse of the great invocation because from the center which we call the race of men let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. It has been said that the love of money is the root of all evil, but we have to understand that more deeply. It's the giving in to the desires prompted by the strictly personality nature, which is the root of evil in our world. Largely a combination of the misuse of the lower chakras. We have to think about money in an entirely new way. It's going to take some reconditioning for all of us so that we can really support the coming externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the Christ. As that magnificent statue in Rio, a truer example of what the Christ is than the pain and suffering of the crucified Jesus. Of course, that was a great sacrifice, but the real Christ is something much more. Not only dying for our sins, as it were, but living for the elevation of humanity into its proper position as an initiate, the initiated human kingdom, money towards the initiation 
of the human kingdom. And as we think in these terms, the presence of the Christ can strengthen us. We have gathered in your name, Lord Maitreya, be with us. two great events occurring on our planet now, the absolutely necessary events, are the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the Christ. If money flows in that direction to support those two great planetary events, it will be at this time serving its purpose. We will sound the Om to close these thoughts. Zoom again with our Ask Project Meditations next Wednesday as we continue the Triangles Meditations. We're working in meditation as members of the new group of world servers and we are trying to prepare the way in this era of the forerunner during the last nine years to hold steady with the true principles and that which must be accomplished. We must believe, because it is true, that what we do together in esoteric, spiritually occult meditation will serve a good purpose to prepare men's minds and hearts for the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the Christ. And now we will close with the ancient, ancient prayer, <clears throat> the Gayatri. <clears throat> 